With new platform launches from Intel and AMD coming in the next month on the high-end desktop space, it's a great time to be a consumer. On the AMD side, we sort of know what to expect with uh, pricing. We sort of have a ballpark range, anywhere from that $850 to sort of $1,100 is what we're expecting to pay for those 16 core 32 thread processors, but that's only half the story of a platform. Now normally when you build a computer, a motherboard doesn't usually cost all that much. You can pay anywhere from like uh, $60 on the extremely low end if it's an older chipset to $150 or $200 if you're getting a very nice motherboard. And if you're really going to the extreme with your build, you may pay towards $300 on the consumer grade platforms. But in the high end desktop space, we typically see motherboards go on the bottom end at around $250 and they can go up all the way to $600 or even sometimes north of that. So when it comes to AMD's new Threadripper processor line and the X399 chipset, just what will we expect to pay for those motherboards, especially those ones that were shown off at Computex 2017? So the rumors surrounding Threadripper are many, but it looks like the entry level 16 core 32 thread behemoth from AMD may cost around the $850 price point with possibly a higher bend variant similar to the 1800X versus 1700 costing more in the $1000 price range, but that's only half of the platform. The other side to the equation is just how much motherboards will cost and according to Bits and Chips, which is an Italian publication. Uh, it'll be a lot, and uh, that's not surprising. Now, we can speculate about price based on a couple different factors. First off, that the socket itself on the X399 motherboards will be a little bit more expensive to produce because of its physical size. And being a premium chipset for the high-end desktop space, obviously X399 boards are going to be expensive, more comparable to the X99 and now X299 motherboards. So what we're looking at here is the ASUS Zenith Extreme X399 motherboard that was shown off at Computex. Again, this is an EATX motherboard for the upcoming Threadripper line of processors. Now, if we look at its physical layout and compare it to something like the X299 ASUS ROG Strix motherboard, we can sort of start to get a feel for the price point. The Strix motherboard on your right is listed at $350. That being said, the Zenith Extreme motherboard actually resembles the layout of more something along the lines of the ASUS ROG Rampage 5 Edition 10, which was an X99 motherboard, and that motherboard retails for an eye-popping $569. So I'm going to go ahead and go out on a limb and say that the Zenith Extreme is going to be a little bit closer to the Rampage 5. And I would go ahead and estimate a cost just based on these two other ASUS motherboards that are on the market and we know pricing for. We're probably looking at anywhere from $450 to $600 for the Zenith Extreme. Moving on to ASRock, they showed off a couple different X399 motherboards, one being the Fatality and one being the Tai Chi, with the only real difference that I could find being that it appears the Fatality will come with an integrated 10 gigabit network port versus the normal 1 gigabit port on the Tai Chi, which would seem to indicate the Fatality will actually cost more than the Tai Chi. Now on the X299 side of things, ASRock also has a Tai Chi and a Fatality board, but in this case the Tai Chi is actually more expensive than the Fatality, with the Tai Chi coming in at $290 and the Fatality only coming in at $250. That being said, both motherboards give us a very good targeting point for the X399 uh, sibling boards, and it looks like the sibling boards will probably be anywhere from that $250 price point to probably somewhere around the $325 price point if that socket really is that much more to make. And last up is Gigabyte for our list of X399 motherboards. And again, it has X299 siblings. In fact, it has a couple of them that have very similar board layouts. One of which is the X299 RS Gaming 7, the other being the X299 RS Gaming 9. Both of them again have very similar motherboard layouts, however the Gaming 7 has a little bit more of a similar layout in that it only has one of its M.2 slots with the heatsink on it, whereas the Gaming 9 has all three of its M.2 slots with heatsinks. 
So based on the $400 asking price of the Gaming 7 and the $500 asking price of the Gaming 9, I think it's probably fair to say that the X399 sibling will come in somewhere in between those two price points, anywhere from that $400 to $500 price point, again depending on the socket, considering that it looks like it resembles more the Gaming 7, I would tend to err on the side of towards $400 instead of towards the $500 price point. So let me know in the comments down below just what you expect to pay for some of these motherboards that were shown off at Computex 2017 on the AMD side. If you like this content, you can also give it a like, share, subscribe, and again, those comments down below help out a lot. You can follow me on Instagram and on Twitter at Hoodra Hardware. They are the same tag for your convenience. And as always, we'll let YouTube queue up a couple more videos for my channel for you to watch. I'm Shane with Hoodra Hardware, and I'll see you guys in the next video.